All right, United fans, where are you at? Match preview. Manchester United hosting Brentford. We are back. We are back into the Premier League after the international break. That has gone ahead to see it that Man United hasn't gone ahead to obviously see any player injured because even for Manuel Ugarte, he took part into what we call a light training yesterday. And today, he's in part of a team that took part into the training sessions. And we are really having lots of positives coming in through from the manager, and that is Eric Ten Hag. Lots of stories that have gone ahead, obviously, jamming it. And we want to obviously see how United is really going to be looking into this beautiful game of football. Remember, United are really one of the teams that is really doing badly. And we are having, is it eight? I think we are having eight points in seven games, and that is really very bad, meaning that we are averaging a point in every game, and Eric Ten Hag needs to obviously style up and obviously hasten up how we are obviously going to really start winning. The good thing is that he's playing at Old Trafford, and you know what it means. When you're playing at Old Trafford, it's really one of those moments that will obviously create good vibes for you as a manager of Manchester United because you know you're playing home, playing Brentford, a team that led us 1-0 until the 8, 8, 8, 8, 9th minute last season. Scott McTominay came off the bench and I think went ahead to score the winner. They even, I think even scored two goals into that game that saw United win into that beautiful game of football and it ended two goals to one. And this time round they're returning to Old Trafford and Manchester United was really very, very paranoid about the injuries. But Eric Ten Hag has some positive news for Manchester United and let's continue to obviously be here to see how things are really going to pan out. Manchester United is a team that is really struggling to get wins, you know, we are creating chances and we are killing off games and ever since this season started, I think we've gone ahead to win, um, I think we've won two games, you understand? We won against Fulham, we won against a side called... Um, Southampton, we lost to Brighton, we lost to Liverpool, we lost to Tottenham Hotspur, and we drew, we, we got Barron Rose against Aston Villa and against uh, Crystal Palace, you get? So, Man United is really working its ass out to obviously get the best results of three points into this coming game that's going to be played tomorrow at Old Trafford, and let's see close to 100 likes mark on this video. Now, Remember, we've played three games at Old Trafford. You get Fulham, Tottenham Hotspur, and Liverpool, and we've only won one, and we've gone ahead to lose two consecutively. And now, if it wills tomorrow, then that will be another record broken by Eric Ten Hag, because that last happened very many years ago. So, we are here to see to that United really goes ahead to obviously win into the mix. But United is placed 14th. You know, and I think Brentford is really placed a little bit higher than Manchester United. And Brentford has a start that they've gone ahead to score, like, however much they haven't gone ahead to win very many games. But they've gone ahead to score some of the quickest goals into the league. And they've gone ahead to score very many set-piece goals into this season. But that won't worry me because Manchester United have looked well when it comes to set-pieces. We defend them very, very well. Not like last like season when we considered very many of those. Manchester United is <clears throat> welcoming back Ganacho, Lisandro Martinez, Mazarui, Manuel Ugate, um, Amad Diallo. All of those have been really having knocks, but they're really fit and they're really ready to go. Then the absentees are really going to be. Um, we don't have uh, Lenny Yoro. We don't have Harry Maguire. We don't have Luke Shaw. Malasia, 50-50, but is expected to obviously return very soon. And uh, Mason Mount is also really out. But the rest of the players are readily available. Then, for the side of Brentford, they are known to having Rico Ray, Joe da Josh Da Silva, Igo Thiago, Aaron Haiki, Gustavo Neves. All those are really out, and Martin Jensen are really out. But Wissa is back, Michael Damsgaard is back, Christian Nogard is back, and some will really require what we call a late fitness assessment to see to that they obviously feature into this game of football. All note that is a man known as um, 
um, Thomas Frank, the manager, and how his squad is really looking to obviously coming through and to eat out with the club of Manchester United at Old Trafford in a game that can really take off pressure. It can take off pressure from Eric Ten Hag, and I'm like, he needs to come up and obviously win this game of football because if he doesn't win it, I think he would have gone ahead, obviously, increase pressure. Not like he's going to be sucked, but pressure is really going to be mounting onto him. Let's go into the probable starting level for the club of Manchester United. As things stand, the system is 4-2-3-1, right? 4-2-3-1 is a system, and that's how we anticipate that Man United is really going to be really standing. And, obviously... In goal, it's going to be Andrew Onana. <clears throat> no doubt about that. And I think you know that very well that Andrew Onana is going to be in pin stages for the club of Manchester United. Right back, he's going to be Mazorui returning from that little injury that he really got. Because we really had a story that we even ran on this channel that he's really going to be out for some time. And it was rumored all approximately to be four weeks. But he's back into the mix to face off Brentford. Left back. It's Diego Dalo obviously playing into that position, obviously, with Tarell Malassia really having problems into the mix. Now, the most important bit of it all is the central defense because people like John Evans was in flying form when you're playing against Aston Villa, named man of the match, and maybe he deserves to be play another game in here for you. And the big question is, who is really going to be starting? I anticipate that... Matthias Delit is really going to be played as a right-sided centre-back alongside Lisandro Martinez as a left-sided centre-back because this has to work out. And I think this time around, they are going to start and in the midweek maybe, that's when John Evans might obviously come on through and really put in the required shift altogether. So I believe that that's going to be the back five of Eric Ten Hag and I see him resorting to his usual back five in there. Now, we go to the midfield. Kobe Mainu is injured, one, and um, Manuel Ugate, I don't think that this is the right game for Ten Hag to risk him into the game. Maybe he can come off the bench, but I believe we are going to go back to the initial double pivot that really made Eric Ten Hag's debut season at Manchester United look colorful and very rewarding. That is Casimiro in there for you and Ericsson. Ericsson is in flying form. Even during the international break, he found himself getting a goal and an assist, you know, into that game of Sweet Zealand, where they drew 2-2, and Ericsson really had an assist and an equalizer in him. So, it shows you that he's really going to be played into those positions in there for you. And I believe at Old Trafford, if you're having Casemiro and um, Ericsson do their work very well, I think they can obviously maneuver through that midfield of Brentford. That's according to me. They can do really a better job. Though for me, I believe Ericsson should be played as a number 10. So, in the central attacking midfield, there comes Bruno Fernandes. He's undroppable. And during the international break, he's really one of those that really came in through and obviously won the man of the match in their first game. They played against Poland. And when they're playing against which team... Scotland, I think they drew, and obviously he never really did anything. So this is the game for him to redeem himself. He's going to be playing at Old Trafford, and all what he want to see is him being a magnet on the ball, and obviously being more composed and not going in for Hollywood passes. At that age, he deserves to be acting as a more seniorist player at the club, and obviously uh, de dedicate the tempo of the game. But when we move this ball from the central defense to the Casemiro's and Ericsson and give it to Bruno Fernandes, that's where everything really stops to happen. So we want him to obviously come up and obviously show us what he's really made of. On the right attacking side of the midfield, I know it's really going to be Amadi Diallo. Obviously fresh. He never went into the international break because he was really ill and he's really here to obviously fight for his position at the club of Manchester United. That is Ahmad Diallo for you. After Ahmad Diallo left attacking side of the midfield, it's not going to be Ganache. I believe it's going to be Marcus Rashford. So that's how I believe Eric Ten Hag is really going to be lining up. And who is going to be leading the line? Obviously, it's going to be Rasmus Hoyland. I saw him really play well into the international break the first game he played 17 minutes and the second game he came up and obviously put in a very good shift altogether and he went ahead to obviously 
play 70 minutes plus in the game of Switzerland and he was taken off. So I really love what he really put out in the field of play. He had, I think, some two threatening moments at goal and he looks like he's really sharpening every day that really passes by as a player of Manchester United. So for me, that is the probable starting eleven for the club of Manchester United. But as we we really do our job, there are players like Imbuemo, Wisa, they're really going to be having... Um, they're really gonna be coming at us like rain being chased from the heaven, you know from the heaven So I just can't wait to see how this game of football is really gonna go But I don't know what your thoughts are about that probable starting 11 for the club of Manchester United Feel free to go into the comments section and tell me what your thoughts are about this now Let's go to the head head stats and see what Google is telling us Manchester United have won each of their last five home league games against Brentford by an aggregate of 13 to 2 with their last such defeating coming in February 1937. So we last lost to this team in 1937 at Old Trafford. So I think that really has all pointers that we are really the favorites to win. Though it doesn't mean that you're really gonna pick the three points. Two, having won four of their of their first six league meetings with Manchester United between 1933 and 1937, a draw and a loss. Brentford have won just one of their last ten games against the Red Devils and you know when that game came in through second game of Eric Ten Hag at Manchester United in the Premier League they beat us by four goals to nil and that's the game that really saw Eric Ten Hag make players of Manchester United run 35 kilometers during the training session thirdly four of the five goals scored in two Premier League meetings between these sides last season came in second half stoppage time so you know that. Secondly, Manchester United have won just one of their last six Premier League games, failing to score in any of their last three. They last went four league games without a goal back in 1989. So remember, we never scored against Aston Villa, never scored against Crystal Palace, and never scored against Tottenham Hotspur, meaning that we are really in a very huge goal drought that we need to obviously erase and see to it that all comes to pass. Lastly, Brentford have lost all three of their Premier League away games so far this season. They've not begun a league campaign with four straight losses on the road since 1961-1962 when they lost their first nine in their third tier. So, even when you're playing, even when you're going to play against Southampton, Remember, we are returning from the international break. That was those were the stats, and the stats were like Southampton had not gone ahead, obviously, lose four games consecutively, you know. And guess what? We came up and obviously beat them up. So, I believe we really have all what it takes to beat the side of a Brentford. And I come up with a prediction of 3 1 for the club of Manchester United. I think. This is the game that is really going to be turning around everything at the club of Manchester United. And Eric Ten Hag needs to win these three games. Because if he wins Brentford, Fanabach, West Ham and Leicester City, even if he draws against Chelsea, all will be okay. Because would have gone ahead obviously collect um, how many? Would have gone ahead to collect seven in the possible nine. And in the previous seven games, we've gone ahead to play. We haven't gone ahead to collect nine. So... If at all in the next three Premier League games, we're going to hit to collect nine, I think that will be okay. And if at all you're playing Chelsea at Old Trafford, it will be something great for us to obviously <clears throat> capture or really collect two six points from West Ham and Brentford to really fire us into the game of Chelsea. Because when we have those points in, I tell you, everything will obviously move into the right direction that we really deserve it to be. So, my prediction is 3-1. I don't know what your predictions are for this beautiful game of football. Go into the comment section and really run into this. So, I sign out for now. See you later. I call upon for your reactions into the comment section below. Man United versus Brentford. Your predictions are hugely welcome in here. Bye-bye.